and we tried to reduce the paraxial equation, a complicated differential equation for u, into two different equations uh, for p and q, these complex beam parameters. And uh, we substituted those, um, that trial solution into the paraxial equation. And after about a page of some fairly grueling algebra, we ended up with, um, with two differential equations, one for p and one for q. They're first order um, ordinary differential equations for these two complex functions. And um, that took about a page of algebra. This is not how I do it in my everyday practice of physics. Um, this is what we actually did. It took 15 minutes. So this is um, sped up 60 times. We're looking at about one minute per second. Uh, and thus, this animation goes for about 15 seconds. But in practice, uh, you know, you wouldn't do this unless you, you had to in an exam. And I wouldn't make you go through such a, a long derivation in an exam. Uh, so I want to show you now how to do this in Mathematica in about a third of the time or less. So um, you can uh, put, start your stopwatches if you feel like it. So we have to define a, um, a u function, which is our Gaussian trial solution. And it's going to be exactly the same form as, um, as before. And uh, we have to put in the form of the um, spherical phase. So that's our trial solution. What are we going to do with it? Well, a couple of things we needed to do. The first thing we needed to do was take the second order transverse derivative. So I'll take the second order derivative of u uh, with respect to x. That doesn't look very um, useful to us. Recall, though, that we are um, divided through by a common factor of 2ik times u of xyz when we ended up doing our derivation. Gentlemen, have you got something to add in the back? OK. This still doesn't look super helpful, so let's simplify it. Much simpler. So that's the uh, second order derivative of u with respect to x. And we've taken out a common factor of, um, of 2ik times u. Remember, we had to um, add in the second order derivative with respect to y as well. So let's do that here. And we get something really, really simple. I'm going to call that the first term in our paraxial equation, our paraxial 1. The second term was related to the first order derivative of u with respect to z. So defining a paraxial 2 here, this was 2ik times the derivative of u uh, once with respect to z. That's how I get these derivatives. I just tell Mathematica which variable I would like to differentiate with respect to and how many times I'd like to differentiate, in this case, once. Again, that doesn't look um, super pretty, but if we divide through by that common factor, 2ik u x, y, z, we get something that looks, looks a lot nicer. So to compose the entire paraxial equation, I just have to add those two terms together. So uh, quite unimaginatively, I'm going to call this paraxial. It's going to be the sum of these two. And recall uh, something else we did was uh, we replaced every time we saw an x squared plus y squared, we made that uh, an r squared. This is unlike most substitutions you'll have seen in Mathematica so far, where you've simply taken one variable and replaced it with either another expression or a number. Now we're just doing pattern matching. Lots of mathematics is just about pattern matching. So this concept of just looking for terms x squared plus y squared and replacing them with an r squared term should be quite natural and familiar to you as practitioners of mathematics. Uh, Mathematica does it brilliantly. It goes through and finds all the x squared plus y squareds and replaces them with r squared. If you look closely now, you'll see that this is just a polynomial in R. And again, we, um, we use this fact in our derivation of the equations for P and Q by uh, grouping the coefficients of this polynomial in R. So let's go ahead and do that. To find the coefficients of that polynomial, we have to use a, uh, a function called coefficient list. If you're unsure about how to use coefficient list, highlight it and press F1. And it says that we're going to get a list of coefficients of powers of the variable, uh, starting with the power naught. So it's really simple. You just specify the polynomial, specify the variable, and it will tell you all the coefficients. So we're going to um, use that on the praxial equation, on the left-hand side of the praxial equation. And the variable we care about is r. Cool. So straight away, it's given us the, the zeroth order power. The linear power was vanishing because we only had uh, a constant term and a quadratic term in the variable r. And remember, we, we're going to set each of these coefficients to 0. So if I um, set this to 0, I'll get something which is not incredibly useful, because it's saying that this whole list is equal to 0. I have to use a, um, 
a nice piece of Mathematica syntax here called thread, and it will take that uh, equivalence and um, map it through the bracket to take each of the terms being equal to zero. So here I've got the, um, the zeroth order of R, that coefficient's equal to zero. The second one was just a statement of zero equals zero. And Mathematica simplified that to true, because it is. And the final one is, um, is the quadratic coefficient of R equaling zero. So um, this is pretty much the entire job done, although it isn't in the form that we derived the other day, nor, it is, nor is it in the form of the lecture notes. So again, we just asked Mathematica to simplify this. And uh, hopefully that will give us something a little bit simpler after we tell Mathematica that k is bigger than zero and q of z is bigger than zero. There we go. So in about 10 lines of code and probably under 10 minutes, we derive these two equations, one for p and q, uh, simple first order differential equations for these complex beam parameters.